Welcome to the Palmcast with Steve Willis, your independent, unbiased, and unbought source for Ole Miss Athletics. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is October the 28th, 2020 Vanderbilt Week. Ole Miss versus Vanderbilt, 3 o'clock SEC Network, Saturday. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Stephen Willis. And there are a numerous ways to follow the show. Please pick your favorite. You can follow us on Twitter at the Stephen Willis or at Old Positively. You can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash palmcast or join our Facebook group at Positively Ole Miss. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Positively Ole Miss. Hit the bell for notifications. That'll let you know when we're streaming. We're not going to do it for a couple of months, but it'll help you out eventually if you subscribe now. And, of course, Twitch. Join us there. Positively Ole Miss, all one word. If audio is your thing, you can catch us on Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, or Pandora. So that is the ways to follow the show. Please subscribe to whichever is your favorite avenue of getting the show. Leave us a review if you do the podcast thing, but five star, you can say whatever you want. I'm not going to look at it. You can call me um, a tick turd if you want, but that's just the way it works. But anyway, thanks again for joining us this morning. We are going to talk a little bit about hope and optimism and why cynicism is the greatest threat to keeping a program just teetering. The best you can be is mediocre. There's no, there's no way you can break through the ceiling um, with a cynical mindset. Now, some people prefer the cynical mindset because they are always going to be right eventually because Ole Miss is very much a yo-yo program. And by yo-yo, um, I mean in the English Premier League um, terminology where teams would get relegated, come back up, get relegated, come back up. That's what they mean by yo-yo. So... Hope is just the one of the most important parts of this. It's going to bring all levels of perception. And if you see people that aren't optimistic, aren't hopeful, you need to ignore them. And you need to just have fun doing what you like to do anyway because it's going to be more fun if you're hopeful and optimistic than if you're cynical. That's just the way this works. That's the way fanhood works. But if you become cynical, it becomes a easier for a death spiral to develop. And people like that because whenever they're extorting money from you, um, they need an emotional response. And whether that is happiness or whether that is anger, they don't care. And let's just be honest. For the last five years, they have just milked anger. It just milked it. Ever since they went off the field at the Sugar Bowl, they have milked anger. That's just what they do. But they don't care about the results on the field. They only care about themselves. But they create the narrative. And they're pretty good at it. But you have to understand that to you it's meaningless what they are saying. They don't know. They're just as full of shit as the rest of us. There's no insight. There's no access. If you really want to know about coverage right now, you can go to YouTube and watch the interview and be just as informed as they are. They have no access and they're not with Lane Kiffin here. Believe me, this setup is the college football wet dream. There's no media going to be allowed to practice. They can create this little cocoon, this bubble. 
So everybody's acting like they know what's going on. They're pretending to know what's going on. They pretend like they know better, when in reality they don't know much at all. They are a C- student when it comes to the game of football. That's why optimism is important. Also, and trusting your knowledge. Don't just assume that anybody knows more than you do. You can listen to them, you can enjoy them, but you can't assume that they more know more than you do. So many people are willing to give that power away. They are willing to give that power away and just assume the other person knows more and then you end up being misinformed. So when it comes to this Ole Miss quarterback problem and, and, and we're heading towards a problem quickly, not a controversy necessarily because I haven't seen whether number two can run the offense at the same level, not this offense, but a problem. I mean, eight interceptions in two games is a problem. Three interceptions in the red zone is a problem. That's the margin of victory in both games. Ole Miss wins both games if that doesn't happen. That's how how slight the margin of error is in this. But Ole Miss has a quarterback problem. Um, he can still turn it around. He can still get it back on track, but he has to get it back on track. We have long, nobody has doubted Matt Corral's physical tools. The doubts have come from his mental makeup. And obviously Arkansas was allowed to get him twice last week. Now, if it happens a third time, it's a problem. And if he plays poorly, even like he did against Auburn again, expect a two-quarterback system. We've gone over FAU in 2017 and Daniel Parr and Jason Driscoll and how that looked. We've, we've done all that. If you have a question about it, you can go back through our podcast and do boot camp the offense. I think that's back in March. Anyway, we got a lot for you today. Palmcast, Stephen Willis, stick around. Only 10% of us get enough daily exercise. And that number is dropping. Nearly 30% of us are overweight or obese. We spend six hours a day in front of a screen. As a result, we now have a shorter life expectancy than our parents. But give us the right start in sports, and we'll never stop. Learn how at activeforlife.ca. Hey, this is Stephen Willis from Positively All Miss. We're almost done with this break. We'll be back with good information quite soon. The military has been in every generation of my family, and so has VA. It wasn't easy for my dad after Vietnam, but VA helped him and my mom get the home they'd always wanted. My grandpa's been coming to VA since World War II, they even helped him lay to rest one of his battle buddies from Normandy. And me, I followed in their footsteps and served with pride. And now that I'm out of the military, the GI Bill's helping me with school. Every generation of my family has served, and VA has served us all. Palmcast, Stephen Willis, we're here talking about hope and optimism and why that is the better way to watch college sports. 
You can't live backwards. You understand, you know, you can't live backwards. Everything has to be built forward because going backwards and looking backwards will not help you. The best way to miss what's happening in front of you is to be looking behind you. So through all of this, through hope and optimism, we're about building this program, taking the next step, what needs to be done. And that's what this podcast is for. It's all about building the program. And we'll move it over to basketball and we'll move it over to baseball eventually too. But this is always going to be a primary football show. We'll cover some basketball and we'll cover some baseball, but Ole Miss is a football school. We will always cover football, even if it's March. But it goes with the regular season this year, um, the bowl game, if they fix the offense, the Liberty Bowl is going to ask them to come no matter what their record is. People need to understand that as well. Ole Miss can be 2-8 and eight and go to the Liberty Bowl. Because they want Ole Miss because we'll show up and we can drive to the game. And, yeah, it's, it's the best-case scenario for them in this COVID um, era. But hope and optimism. It's not blind, but it's about accomplishing your next goal. It's always doing the next thing. Looking back does you no good whatsoever. Looking back is one of the reasons Ole Miss has struggled for 50 years. Looking back to the late 50s, early 60s. Looking back to Archie Manning. I mean, that's the way it is. Ole Miss needs to look towards the future, towards making this work in a different way. And that's what this podcast is about. It's all about the future, the next step. What do we need to do? As you've heard from my podcast, if something is going wrong or we're underperforming, I'll say that. Because it's important to recognize that to get to the next step. The first step is diagnosing the problem. And right now there is a huge problem. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Needed to get a swig of water. Um, and I mean, we're not seeing anything special right now. Just dropping back and waiting on your throw. So we need to run the ball. We need to run the ball quite a bit. Like we did against Auburn, 280 yards. But the game would have been won if not for an interception in the red zone. Period. Not even counting the horrible call that ended up costing Ole Miss the game. Not even, not even counting that. The fake field goal doesn't happen if the interception doesn't happen because they take the points. Think about that. At least three times in the past two weeks, Ole Miss has been inside the five-yard line and got zero points. And last week, everybody is putting the game management and everything on Kiffin, and Kiffin will gladly jump on that grenade. But I believe that is a quarterback issue as well. There is a a mental issue, a mental block that is happening. It can be turned around, but he has to do something that he has not done until now. And 
I mean, that that's just the truth. He has to pull out of this tailspin. Whenever he makes a mistake, his next completion, he's trying to score two touchdowns on, which is not possible. And you start pressing, and it's like Shane Falco with quicksand or that eel that um, has two jaws that bites onto you that when you struggle, it just gets tighter and tighter and tighter. It's, it, it's a situation like that at the quarterback position right now. Now, the run game is strong. It is. And... If Vanderbilt goes like the last two weeks from the quarterback position, we will, at a minimum, officially have a two-quarterback system and a daily competition. They just, they don't trust him at the moment. And that's weird saying after the first three weeks when he looked so good. But it just goes to show how confidence just can rattle a person. And I'm talking about Lane Kiffin. His confidence, he can get rattled. His trust level in his quarterback went from 10 to 3 over the space of 14 days. Or less than that, 8 days. Just 10 to 3. He throws all the interceptions. All of a sudden, John Rice Plumlee is in the game. Remember, decision-making, accuracy, and I forget something else was Lane Kiffin's self-professed most important three things for a quarterback. But decision-making was number one. Nothing pisses him off more than turning the football over not taking check downs, not being efficient playing the position. Nothing, not a thing. And we're close. We are, we are, we are close to an issue happening. And People need to get ready for that. I, I I don't expect, but we could see some of Kincaid Dent even in the last five games. It might be a situation if this continues that we could potentially have neither Matt Corral or John Rice Plumlee moving forward. Remember, I told you the other day that it would not surprise me at all if Luke Altmeyer transferred or moved in and was in this recruiting class and was the day one starter. It would not surprise me at all. There's just a mental makeup that has to be handled, for lack of a better word, and you can't press. Now, if you can combine John Rice Plumley and um, Matt Corral and physical tools, you would have the perfect quarterback, minus probably an inch or two. But, you know, that doesn't happen. Now, we need to see the offense before all this can happen we need to see what the offense will look like as John Rice Plumley is quarterback. Need to see what that looks like. If this struggle continues. We're not calling for a quarterback change, and we've said many times we hope Matt Corral turns it around. But part of the mindset of trying to get where we want to be is that we are looking to the next and we have a shorter leash than most 
or you can't do it, you're gone, sweep aside, onto the next guy. Until we don't have a next guy. I mean, that's the way this works. That's the way pretty much we can move forward. Now, we have five games left. We're one and four. Could be three and two. Um, No matter what happens, we beat ourselves against Arkansas and Auburn the last two games. But let's just be real also. Even being in a position to beat ourselves against those teams is an improvement of the program. Last year, we were losing to Alabama and Florida by 24 points. This year, it was 15. Losing to Auburn by, well, really, we lost to Auburn by the same amount. But we were losing to that level team by 15-ish points. Now it's about seven. Now let now I don't want to talk about Arkansas because Arkansas is a fluke. Uh, I mean, it's I don't know if it would happen again, but that is where we stand. We should be hopeful. We should be optimistic, and we should be taking steps to make sure the hopeful and the opposite optimistic is coming to fruition. Palmcast Stephen Willis, talk to you in a little bit. You want to answer that, don't you? I bet it's just killing you seeing the soft glow just inches away. Someone wants to tell you something or ask you something. Oh, come on, answer it already. (gasps) Just so we're clear, that wasn't my fault. Next time, ignore your inner voice. Don't text and drive. A message from Florida's trusted choice, independent insurance agents. Hey, this is Stephen Willis. I just want you to stick around a little longer. We're going to get back to the podcast right after these messages. Tonight, nearly 40,000 veterans across the country are homeless. These men and women have pledged to serve our nation, and now we must serve them. Landlords across the country have helped make significant progress in reducing veteran homelessness by making housing available, but there is more that we can do to bring our veterans home. Visit www.va.gov slash homeless to see how you can get involved. And if you are a veteran and you are experiencing homelessness, please call 877-4-AID-VET. Thank you. All right. Last segment of the day, Palmcast, Stephen Willis. Thank you so much for joining us. Looking at big line movers this week. It, um, let's see. How can we do this? We'll just go um, in order. We're on Vegas Insider, by the way. Um, the Texas A&M line is dropped by two and a half to three points to Arkansas. So Arkansas is now a 12-point underdog, depending on who you go through. But the consensus is 12. Mississippi State is a 31-point underdog. That line has actually dropped twice which that's a big number. Um, Ole Miss versus Vanderbilt. You can get it in some places for um, 16 and a half. Um, It opened at 18. The consensus is 17. But that's a decent favorite favorite for the Rebs, but we're dealing with a Vanderbilt team that has had a bunch of COVID issues. Um, the biggest mover of the week is probably it opened up at is Auburn minus two and LSU is now favored minus three. So that's that's interesting. Nebraska gets a break. Um, they play Wisconsin without that quarterback that threw for five or six touchdowns last week. Um, Southern Miss is a pick 'em with Rice. Um, well, some places they're favored by a point, point and a half. Um, some places Rice is favored. 
But Southern Miss lost their interim coach to Austin Peay, so they're getting an interim, interim coach. Um, so it is, it's hard times are going on right now at Southern Miss. And let's see, what else we have going on here? That's really about it. Football tomorrow night, um, South Alabama and Georgia Southern, along with Colorado State and Fresno. Oh, so the Mountain West is back. And next week, we have some action. We're going to have football pretty much every night of the week, so it's going to be a lot of fun. But that's what it looks like going into this weekend. Um, honest to goodness, it's a pick, you po pick your poison um, situation <clears throat> for Vanderbilt. They're going to drop eight because that's what happened last week as much as they can because they don't want to be beat with the explosives. They want Ole Miss to have to drive the field. And Derek Mason usually comes up with some good stuff. Um, but they don't have the firepower to win a shootout. So even just running the ball and throwing the ball for 150 yards, Ole Miss should win this game handily. I mean, that's just the way this works. And in a, in a reality, they could be 3-3 three and three at the moment. You know, if, if that call last week against Auburn is made, they're going to three and three, but instead they're looking at two and four with South Carolina coming to town. So we have a shot to be really moving forward and a lot of momentum at the end of the year, which honest to goodness, eight, 1983, Billy Brewer's first year, is the perfect um, hope for this team moving forward because it, all the momentum in the world is built then. And if they can do that, they're in good shape. And I think they're going to, I think they're going to flip that quarterback. I do think Ole Miss right now has a quarterback problem, not a controversy, a problem. There's still time to spin out of it the way we are. If not, you're going to see more of a two-quarterback system. Be prepared. It's all about trust. Understand that. Once a coach does not trust the quarterback, he plays less and less until he doesn't play at all. That's football going back 100 years. It's all about the trust. And decision-making will be the most important thing moving forward. If he can fix it, great. If not, he's going to get moved on from. Because we watched this movie last year. The same thing is happening as last year. I mean, the offense was a little bit more explosive early. But... Last year, everything went south game four. The difference is the Alabama game this time, or last year, he kind of opted out of. And John Rice got his first start, and he never relinquished from there. So we got, we, we're going to go through some things this year. We are going to go through some things, but we need to realize that this is all part of the build. This is just year one. No spring practice, no fall camp. You know, ignore the negatives, celebrate the positives. I've told you all of that. Um, but we potentially have a problem at that position. Well, we'll see after this week. Vanderbilt's really good with his own defense, and it could be the first step of a recovery for him. 
I hope so. Anyway, thanks for listening. Stephen Willis, Palmcast. See you tomorrow.